Sooner or later, the question why echoes in the mind of most people who fall ill and their relatives. No matter if it is a cancer or a diabetes or psychiatric disease. Why has this happened to me? Why do I feel this bad? Why is also the question many clinicians wonder about when they interview their patients. Why has this individual become ill? Why now and why this specific composition of symptoms? The place to look for answers is in the field of psychopathology. Here, why is the central word. In psychopathology, the aim is to give an understanding and an explanation for the etiology, which means the reason for psychiatric diseases and symptoms. Traditionally, in the Western world during the last century, three large traditions of theories have been represented in psychopathology. Psychological theories, which state that psychopathological manifestations are a result of intrapsychical conflicts, existential worrying or psychological traumas earlier in life, or a result of erroneous learning. Social theories, which state that psychopathology should be understood as a consequence of malfunctioning social networks, families, societal norms and values. And then there is the biological theories that we are focusing on in this course, searching for mechanistic explanations, mostly involving processes in the central nervous system but also its interplay with the surrounding body and the external environment. So attempts have been made to integrate these three views on psychopathology, trying to establish a unifying biopsychosocial theory. In this video, we will focus on the third kind, the biological disease models in psychiatry. We aim to give an overview by discussing three general disease models. The diathesis stress model, the nature versus nurture model, and the neurodevelopmental model. But before that, we will zoom out and look at the brain as just an organ among others in the body. Can this organ be affected by ordinary disease processes just as the other organs can? Yes, it can. Just as the liver, the heart, the kidneys, the following kinds of pathology can affect the brain. Genetic mutations, dysfunctional cell organelles, endocrine processes, chronic inflammation, autoimmunity, storage disease, lesions, toxic processes, infection, tumors and lesions. There are signs that each and every one of these processes that can be found to affect other body organs can as well affect the brain, but also that they are involved in some psychiatric symptoms and syndromes. So it's actually not difficult to imagine that if they involve a part of the brain that is mediating cognitive or affective functions, then of course these disease processes can give rise to psychiatric symptoms. So on top of this list, there are also some kinds of disease processes that are more or less unique to the brain and psychiatry, such as disturbances in neural networks, excitoxicity and epilepsy. At the same time, it should also be stated that for most psychiatric disorders, there isn't a specific psychopathological process identified. Rather, there are different competing or complementing models that can explain certain aspects of the disorder. For example, for two of the mostly studied disorders in psychiatry, schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, there are indication that several of these disease processes can be involved. The first of the three general disease models that we will mention today is the diathesis stress model. This model states that psychopathology is the result of an interaction between a predisposition of vulnerability and a stress caused by life experiences. So if a combination of the predisposition and the stress exceeds a certain threshold, then the person will develop a symptom or a disorder. 
the more vulnerable a person is, the less stress it takes. And the more resilient the person is, the more stress it takes. And stress refers to all kinds of negative life events, such as problems in close relations, adverse life events during childhood years, or biological stressors, such as other kinds of diseases or substance use. This model is intuitive and easy to use in dialogue with patients. However, it doesn't say much about what really happens. How does the experience of a life event affect the behavior? To answer that kind of question, we need to consider models that in more detail analyze the interface between the brain and the environment, such as how the HPA axis handles psychotrauma or immunological models. Related to the diathesis stress model is the nature versus nurture model for psychopathology. This model postulates that on a general level, psychiatric disease should be understood from the interplay between genes and environment. And this is actually a fundamental insight about psychiatric disease that so many of them are heritable to a large extent, actually more so than many other disease groups. The heritability numbers are around 40 to 90 percent for most part of psychiatric diseases. However, the fact that none of them reaches 100 percent, of course, indicates that even for the most heritable disease, environmental factors also do come into play. And in this context, environment can be both external factors, such as physical abuse, but also internal factors, such as comorbidity with other disorders or substance misuse. Studying genes in relation to psychopathology is hard for several reasons. The number of genes expressed in the brain is immensely high, around 18,000. It is difficult to study the role of each and every one of them so carefully that would be needed to make firm conclusions. Furthermore, the genes that have been found to be associated to a specific disease only increases the risk marginally, and it is often unclear what this gene's specific role is in the body, for example what the role is for the protein it codes for. And finally, the diagnostic tradition in psychiatry, to sort the disorders as a function of symptoms and not the underlying biology, makes it hard to find any close and direct correlation between genes and symptoms. Just because a certain symptom or syndrome has been identified, it doesn't necessarily follow that this disorder has a specific set of genes linked to it that is not shared by other diseases. So finally, a few words about the neurodevelopmental model, which is a third way of broadly conceptualizing the etiology of psychiatric disorders. This doesn't contradict the before mentioned ways, but it ceases from a slightly different angle. The neurodevelopmental model of psychiatric disease is that insults to brain during sensitive periods of brain development can lead to malfunctioning and also psychiatric symptoms. May it be due to genetic factors or environmental. It is also a property of this model that insults can affect the brain's development in one particular phase, but the effects are not evident until a later phase. So, for example, the brain's neural network for sexuality are formed very early, maybe as early as during fetal life. But it is only when an individual reaches puberty that the hormones start pumping and the function of these networks are revealed. So, if these networks are erroneously established during fetal life, it is not until puberty that the effects and the symptoms will show up. And the same is true also for many cognitive and emotive neural networks. So this model is often referred to when it comes to autism spectrum disorders and also schizophrenia. In summary, there are only few psychiatric disorders for which the exact etiology is mapped out. The question why, why this specific patient has been affected by this specific disorder now cannot be answered in detail for every patient. But for most disorders there is at least a theoretical model, 
And in this short film, we have mentioned three such general models that can help the clinician to reason together with the patient and help her get a better understanding of her situation. For the student that continues to study psychopathology from a neuroscientific perspective, there are many more models to discover.